So now that we know what the Magic 8-Ball program does, we are going to go ahead and program it. So you could see here that I created a uh, new file called Magic 8-Ball. And every program that we've created up to this point has been a fairly simple program, right? Maybe one or two steps. Uh, this one, I guess, is the first one that is more of a multi-step problem that you need to uh, think about a little bit more. So what we're going to do to start this off is I'm going to go ahead and put three quotes and uh, three quotes, right? Three single quotes. What this is is a beginning of a multi-line comment and this is the end of the multi-line comment. Right? So now anything I type inside of those two single uh, those two sets of single quotes is a comment. So here what we're going to do is break down the Magic 8-Ball program into a series of steps that we want to solve. And once you solve all the steps together, then you have the Magic 8-Ball program completed. And this process really is the essence of computer science because what the essence of computer science is is to take a complicated problem and break it down into a series of smaller problems and then to go back and uh, solve each of those simple problems. Once you do, then you've solved the more complicated problem, which is what you wanted to do. So let's go ahead and put number one. And what's the first step? Well, we're thinking about the Magic 8-Ball program and what's the first thing that the person does when he grabs that uh, black 8-Ball? Well, he, what he does is he asks a question, right? So ask a question. And the second step, well, the Magic 8-Ball needs to create a random choice. Right? So I'm going to put here, uh, let's say, uh, determine a random answer. And number three, what we're going to do is print out the random answer to the user. Right? Yes, no, or maybe. And then fourthly, we want it to repeat over and over um, until the user chooses to stop. Okay. So if we can complete all four of these uh, smaller problems, then we can solve the bigger problem, which is the Magic 8-Ball program. And so if you are looking at these a set of smaller problems and thinking to yourself, hey, I know how to ask a question. I know how to determine a random answer. I know how to print out <coughs> that random answer. And then lastly, I know how to repeat that over and over again until the user chooses to stop. Then go ahead and stop the video now and program that. And uh, let's see if you can put it together. Uh, for those of you who are still kind of shaky, I'm going to go ahead and go over e solving each of these smaller problems. Okay. So the first thing here is we want to ask a question. And we've done this previously, right? The way that we do it is we use the input function. And inside the input function, we can uh, enter a prompt in. And what is the prompt that we want to enter in? We can say something like, ask the magic eight ball a question. And what this is, is this, this input function is going to wait for you to enter in something on the keyboard and hit enter. So normally what we do is we say variable equals input. And that's because we normally want to use the input that they entered in further in our program. Right? Whether that's a, a number, we want to take that number and multiply it by another number. Or if that is a letter and we want to determine if it's lowercase or uppercase, we want to save the input. But if we think about our problem here and we think about our program, you want to ask yourself, does our program need the question? And uh, the more and more you think about it, uh, the program really doesn't need the question. Right? All it is is it's taking in a question from the user and it's going to print out yes, no, or maybe. We're not going through the question and creating a specific answer right we are not going to look through the question for a specific word and based on that word give them a uh, specialized answer like if they said something like oh will I be able to go to the movies tonight well the magic eight ball program could say something like no you will not go to the movies tonight and if that's how our Magic 8-Ball program worked, 
then we would need to save the question right? because we would need to look for the word magic and then use it in our response. But in our simple version, let's go ahead and not do that. Right? So I'm going to just leave the variable question here, but you want to understand that we really don't need to ever use this question variable. Okay? All right, so we got uh, task number one finished. Now let's do task number two. And to determine a random answer, well, what are the random answer choices? It's yes, no, and maybe. Right? So here, what we want to do is sometimes answer yes, sometimes answer no, and sometimes answer maybe. And ideally, we would want 33% yes, 33% of the time no, and 33% of the time maybe. So what we can do is create a random number one, two, or three. And if the random number is one, we're going to print out yes. If the random number is two, we're going to print out no. And if the random number is three, we're going to print out maybe. So our program is going to create a random number. And then based on that random number, we're going to have our program make a decision. And when you make a decision, remember, you want to use a branch because that's the only way that our program can make a decision. Save. Remember the three uh, pillars of computer science is variables can save data. And then we have branches that can make a decision. And then we have loops, and we'll get to that because we want to repeat this over and over again until the user chooses to stop. So a loop is going to help us here as well. Let's go ahead and start by creating that random number. Okay, So let's go ahead and say random number is going to equal to random.randrange. And let's do 1, 2. Or, you know, computer scientists like to start counting at 0. So let's do 0 to 3. And you can notice here that random is underlined red. And the reason for that is we need to import random in order to get this done. So now that we've done that, the underlined red goes away and we're able to print out, I mean, get, uh, generate our random number. Another thing you want to realize is that the first number in RAND range is inclusive, meaning it includes zero. The second number is not inclusive, meaning it does not include three. So the numbers that this is going to generate is one, uh, zero, one, and two. Kay. And that's going to work for us because these are, these are three unique numbers. And the first one is going to represent our yes, our no, and our maybe. Right. All right, so let's go ahead and see if this works. I'm going to go ahead and print out random number and see if we get anything going here. So I play, ooh, I'm going to have to press Control, Run, ask the Magic 8 Ball a question. I'm going to say, will I get a new car this year? And so what we have here is an error. And let's go ahead and take a look at it. Um, okay, so what is the error is that input takes in input from the user as a number, but I'm typing in a string. So I need to go ahead and change this to raw underscore input. I'm going to run it again. And oh, another thing I want is I don't want the question to be typed in on the same line as the prompt. Right? So what I can do is come here and say backslash new line, backslash new line. I want maybe two new lines there. And I'll run it again. OK, ask the Magic 8 Ball question. I'm going to say, will I get a new car this year? Hit Enter. OK, and it prints out 1. Okay. So let's try it again. It prints out 0. Let's try it again. It prints out 1. So we can see that the random number generator is working. So now that we have the random number generator, well, we want to branch on that random number. We want to make a decision. We want to say if that number is zero, that we're going to print out yes, no, or maybe. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and let you do that. And uh, in the next video, we'll talk about how to make this uh, repeat over and over again.